starting to call me the goat, yeah, yeah. They starting to call me the goat, yeah, yeah. They starting to call me the goat, yeah, yeah. I told a bad bitch, give me dope, yeah, yeah. All of my niggas are float, yeah, yeah. Twenties all over the float, yeah, yeah. Money all over the float, yeah, yeah. Now they say I am the goat, yeah, yeah. Right, zero degree haircut. Okay, one of the most important things is the head position. Okay, she needs to be upright always while you're cutting. Cannot be this, cannot be that, cannot be this, cannot be that. It has to be upright, okay? Number two, your fingers next to the head. You're not lifting the hair away from the head. This is where the hair is, this is where it's staying. Okay, I don't want to see this. You need to be right here. Your fingers literally, well, they cannot really be touching the neck neck because, you know, you're not really cutting up to the neck. But you know what I'm saying. If the head is here, this is where my fingers are staying. Okay. Now, number three. Okay, it is really, really important. Because you're trying to create the same length on a straight line on the bottom, right, you must use what we call horizontal parting. So your parting have to be clean, straight, precise, and horizontal, okay? So always look at yourself right after your section. Did I part it clean? Did I part it right? Is it straight, horizontal, parallel to the floor? Okay, before you continue to do anything, okay? Number three, four, five, I'm gonna say so many numbers, okay? Your fingers always have to be parallel to your part. So if my part is horizontal, my fingers are gonna be exactly parallel to my part. If your fingers change up position going this way, going this way, guess what? Your haircut is not gonna be straight, it's not going to be clean. You'll have one section that is longer and one that is shorter, okay? So you have to be consistent working from center to side, center to the other side. Always maintaining parallel to your part right okay and it can get a little challenging in time so every time you realize that one side is shorter or longer than the other you know that your finger position was not right okay that's when you go back and obviously fix it and make adjustments so how do we start the zero degree haircut okay we have to establish a guide right that guide will be obviously determining the rest of the haircut whatever you cut it first. Always remember, when, you set, when you're establishing a guide, it will always be obviously according to the desired length that the client wants, right? But because sometimes, unfortunately, we work with you know, clients that they're really not sure what they want, they don't know how long or how short, or they tell you two inches, but they really don't want two inches. So you always go with shorter than what they want. Okay, always go with little. You can always go back and cut more. You just cannot glue it back. Second knuckle of your middle finger. In other words, I can have hair going all the way down here. I can't cut it. I'm only cutting whatever this allows me to. So depending on the length of your finger, sometimes you can cut, you know, half an inch, an inch, maybe a little bit over an inch, but you never ever pass the second knuckle. So there's two reasons why you should never pass the second knuckle, okay? And that's all obviously because it affects the haircut. Okay, that will be number one. So if you're passing your second knuckle, okay, the, one, the hair that's on this corner, closer to the edge, will get decreased. That means this edge will be a little bit more shorter than the rest of it. And I assure you of that, okay? So keep that in mind. If your hair is shorter on one side, you pass your second knuckle. So I'm going to establish my guide, right? I'm starting right in the middle. Now again, I showed you the trick yesterday with the comb, right? The tight teeth gives you more tension. The wider teeth gives you less tension. With the wider teeth, your edges will be a little bit more softer. With the tighter teeth, your edges will be a bit more sharper, okay? Both of them are fine, okay? Either way, it's a zero degree haircut. So you want to have an eye level, right? How do we switch up? Huh? Like what if I forget one minute and I'm holding it? You can you can you can do all the haircut with the white or all the haircut with the tight, whichever one you want. Either way, it's still gonna be the same. Either way, it's just gonna be softer or tighter. That's all. Okay. I'm palming my shears right because I'm prepping the hair to cut it. So I'm palming my shears and I'm right in the middle, right? So take your time when doing this, okay? Because you want to create some sort of tension, some sort of pulling, right? So I'm right here, and I'm kind of like determining that 
you know, I kind of like only want to trim for today, okay? So expect your mannequins not to really be short, but believe it or not, even though you'll feel disappointed that you're not cutting a lot, you will feel so much cleaner when you actually style it, even though technically you literally just did, you know, eyelashes, okay? All right, so back to my establishing the guide, okay? Be aware when you establish the guide, okay? Because once you cut, you cut. That is, you know, that is it, okay? So I'm trimming. And what am I doing? What am I cutting? How much? Up to my second knuckle, right? Even though technically I have hair all the way here, right? I'm only going up to my second knuckle. So literally, on average, you always cut about an inch at a time. You never cut more than an inch to an inch and a half. Now, what am I doing? I'm ready to move my, my thumb, right? Or my moving blade, right? So cut, and I stop right at my mid, right at my, see this edge over here? You can cut that, okay? What's gonna happen if you cut it? It will be decreasing the length, right? So I let it go, okay? So that's it, that short piece that's there, that is my guideline. I must follow that guideline in order for me to get a perfect cut. So what do I need to do so, so I can follow my guide perfectly? I have to do one thing. When I move on to the next piece, I have to make sure that I combine together my guide and my hair that I need to be cut, okay? So either I go to the left or to the right, doesn't really matter, you still follow the same guide. I'll tell you though, it takes a while to really get used to this and get the hang of it, but always one side will be a little bit more challenging than the other side. If you're righty, your left will be your challenge, okay? When it comes to the front, when it comes to bangs, everything same way as half of our body is different than the other half it's just the weirdest thing but that's how it actually goes all right so i'm going to the left and here is what i meant by combining my guide with my brand new hair now i don't know if you can see this from there can you anybody i don't know if you can if you can you can get up and see it right so in my hand now i have a combination of my guide and the hair that i'm about to cut right but you notice one thing right you the guide is very visible like I can actually see it right so a lot of you what you wind up doing is you'll bring your fingers all the way down and you wind up sort of covering the guide see kind of like the guide disappeared a little bit now right in between my fingers so you're thinking in your head it's there I'm following it but you're actually covering it thinking that you're following it so if you do this thinking that you're following it what are you doing is you're making a brand new guide that's not matching the guide before. So you're technically making an uneven haircut at that point. So you have to make sure you allow space for your guide to show, right? Even though it's just tiny, tiny inch, you have to be able to see it, right? When it's re-wet, it will give you more of an affirmation where the new hair is and where my guide is, right? So I took my second piece down. Am I going to consider that parting individually or I'm going to combine it with the previous one? Combine. combine it with the previous one, right? Am I going to start on the center just like I did with the previous one? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm starting right in the center. Now do you notice me? I keep on palming and doing this and keep on palming and doing this, right? So that's what you also have to focus today, right? So I'm going to start in the middle. Hopefully I can show you where my newer hair is and where my old hair is. So when do you know to you, a little later, when do you know to you to decide to comb? Um, when do you know when to use the tight one? When you, don't want, when you want a little bit more sharper. Edge. So it depends on your vision of the... It's a slight difference, not like huge difference. It's not, you know, there's wider teeth than this that will make it even more edgy. Mm -hmm. uh, but between the two, like the regular cutting comb is not a huge thing. Just a tight one, it gives you a little bit more tension, it gives you a little bit more control. All right, so I'm starting in the middle, right? Um, I want you to really quickly come up. I mean, if you, if you come one by one, I just want to show you what I see because you will be seeing the same thing on your mannequin. That, do you see the longer strands that are passing the shorter ones? Very few. Do you see it? One by one, as long as you guys get to see it. See the longer strands? Very few, right? Few longer strands that are passing. Can you guys see it? These longer strands that are passing? 
It's only a few. It's really like a fuzz, but oh, you know. Okay. So the rest of the mannequin, how do you think it's going to continue? The same way, right? What? When you say by the same way, what do you mean? And how much am I am I supposed to take down each time? Same amount, right? And what kind of straight part am I, am I supposed to use? What kind of parting am I supposed to use? Horizontal. How will my fingers supposed to be angled? Horizontal. Following my? Also, one more thing, and then I'll let you do your thing. Really? One more thing. Now this particular haircut that we're doing, right? Uses a particular finger position, okay? Obviously it's a combination of comb, fingers, parting, all of that stuff. But this position we call palm to palm. This is called palm to palm, okay? And I'll tell you why is this called palm to palm. Because when I'm cutting, Palms face each other. The two palms face each other. That's why this is called palm to palm technique. Typically, when you're only removing exterior lengths into the haircut, which is technically what we're doing with the zero, you a lot of times use palm to palm. When you're doing bangs, a lot of times you use palm to palm. When you're doing angles in the front, a lot of times you're using palm to palm. When you're working on the interior of the haircut, we use the second position, which we're not gonna use anytime soon, but just so you know, we use palm to scalp. That means your palm will be facing your scalp and you're technically using completely different hand position because when you're cutting palm to palm, right, you're cutting below the fingers. When you're cutting palm to scalp, you're cutting above your fingers. Comprende? Okay, all right. So technically, here's what I'm going to do, okay? I'm going to pretend that I went through each of those partings that you'll be going through. Just hold on a second because you want to be aware of this. You gotta when, you get, when you get higher and higher. Okay, because you're gonna notice this, and a lot of you that hopefully there's none of you that aren't paying attention to me now will be asking me when the time comes, right? No. So, <laughs> as we go higher, right? As we go higher, because we're not really cutting a lot amount of hair, you'll notice that the more sections, the more partings you bring down the less really hair you actually get to cut, you don't barely see anything. As soon as you pass kind of like your occipital area, you barely see anything coming occipital? down, right? Because obviously we're not cutting a lot, we're only trimming literally the first couple of sections, which is great, because you can tell already Angel, even though I literally was eyelashes that I took off, the edges look so much better. And because the edges look much better, when you blow dry it and when you curl it after, it's going to look so much cleaner. Right? You needed a blow dryer today? What about when you roll a set in? Either way, roll a set, however you're gonna style it, doesn't matter. I'm saying every little, you know, tiny little trim makes a huge difference. 